Yeah, Angie Mahara here. I apologize if you hear a low humming noise in the background of this video because where my desk is here, there's a window there and they've been doing street work out there or busy work. Pointless stuff, I think, just to give them something to do. Sounds like a sewer cleaner today. That would be on the top of our minds. Anyway, point of the video. You can't put your shoes in the feet of people with BPD. People with BPD can't put their shoes in your feet. No, I'm saying it like that on purpose. Why? Because the topic here is the fact that people with borderline personality in any conflictual interpersonal relating where there's difference, where they're not feeling validated or more to the point, they feel invalidated by anything, be it, be it what you just said, be it fear of abandonment, be it fear of engulfment, uh, approach avoidance conflict, whatever's happening for people with BPD, they're so emotionally charged most of the time. So it, untreated especially, but until and unless really like significantly treated, however we measure that. So people with BPD in general, even when they're not specifically triggered, outside of intellectual pursuits, careers for more high functioning people with BPD, they don't have any real emotional intelligence skills, emotional maturity, ability to get out of the dichotomous quote thinking unquote, that's really their magical thinking. And magical thinking, I just wanna stress again, has all to do with what they feel is what they believe is real. What they feel is what is for them, what they feel they will defend. So when you're trying to, as I'm saying here, put your shoes in their feet, what, what am I talking about? Well, conflicts arise, they get triggered. They start to behave in ways you don't understand or you didn't understand. And even if you understand, it still doesn't make any sense. And so it's very frustrating to painful, to confusing, leads to so much cognitive dissonance and all the other aspects and issues that people in relationships with people with BPD have, or if you're the ex or you got ghosted. Point is your logic, all of the logic in the world doesn't help when you're trying to speak to somebody with borderline personality because they can't meet you there. So it doesn't mean they're not intellectually intelligent, often creative. They have some positive attributes or qualities, but they're but fragments of who these people could be if they would go and get treatment. To really work on and heal and recover from the adverse childhood experiences. Have you experienced that trying to be logical that trying to say hey wait 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 a minute you know like i didn't just do this that they're saying you did but like what i experienced was you know this happened with you and then i was feeling and and the next thing you know they'll cut you off they'll interrupt you they're flipping it around and they are you know this leads to those jade right justify argue defend explain which means that's what people without bpd do people with bpd don't do that they're involved in highly emotionally impulsively driven repetition compulsion cycles of defend defend and right fight defend and right fight because if they feel invalidated, they get triggered by whatever to emotional dysregulation and maybe dissociation and maybe age regression, not always. They don't have any logic. The brain, you know, part of the brain responsible for reasoning is flooded with emotion. And that takes precedence over their being able to think straight. So people with BPD can't follow your logic. When's the last time you tried to put your shoes in the feet of a person with BPD. Doesn't work, does it? So in other words, you cannot put your feet in their shoes and they cannot put their feet in your shoes because you are living emotionally in two parallel or, you know, but different universes. You have a foot, maybe a foot and a half on planet BPD. Emotional lack of reasoning, needing to defend themselves, 
right fighting all through magical thinking, which is what I feel is what the truth is to them. And how dare you try to say this, that, and the other thing. So if you start off trying to reason with somebody with BPD, this doesn't even go well when they're calm usually, but, but when they're triggered or when they're, when there's something conflictual happening or you've been really hurt, you're trying to seek redress for the hurt, they're like, what are you talking about? They go immediately to defense. And this is the self-absorption for survival, mind you, inside a borderline personality that is the narcissistic defense, defenses within BPD, which is not the same as narcissistic personality disorder. People, I, you know, so many clients say this to me and have for years. They're trying to be logical, to be reasonable, rational. You're trying in your mind to go, okay, wait a minute. We were just sitting there watching TV. We were just having a lovely dinner. We were just whatever you were just doing together. And the next thing you know, they're yelling and screaming at you or they're withdrawing or, the, you know, quiet borderline or whatever their presentation is. But like something's really wrong all of a sudden. And you're like, what? And you might even be to the point of like, what now? And so you try to inquire and they're like, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Uh, you know, well, is something wrong? Nothing's wrong. What's your problem? Or it could go many other ways. And then you try to reasonably, rationally, with some modicum of emotional intelligence, and because people of codependency need to raise that up too, your emotional literacy, and, and your ability to be able to feel something and probably think at the same time. People with BPD can't do that. So they're all feeling, and then they're gonna get really defiant they have oppositional defiance. Remember, they're not attached. They don't know what healthy love is. People with codependency might exactly not know exactly what healthy love is either. But every time you try to reason, rationalize, or use logic with somebody with BP, it's going to be met with their right fighting, their defenses. It's going to be all about them. It's going to be <laughs> bugs in air condition. It's going to be all about them because they are feeling something triggered from the past in the here and now as well, like they're being quote, attacked unquote, when you might be speaking very calmly and you're just trying to reason with them. You're just trying to say, hey, you know, like this is what I experienced. We're like, hey, calm down. It's okay. You know, like whatever, if it's, if it's not blown up totally, but reason and logic with all your best and most valiant efforts does not reach people with BPD for any consistent or congruent period of time, period. And it does not reach them when they are triggered and in emotional dysregulation and there's a conflict or there's something there that you want to discuss and it doesn't have to be an outright conflict, but you've just experienced something that they aren't aware of why they do it or if they did it. And when you try to have reason and logic and talk to them about it calmly, they, the quiet borderline is going to withdraw. The, the more petulant or the acting out borderline is going to come at you with how wrong you have to be. They're going to right bite. They're going to twist everything because it's not only oppositional defiance, it's now defense. They're defending themselves as if their survival depends upon it, which goes back to why they're triggered or whatever triggered them. So you can't put your, your feet in the shoes of somebody with BPD. You can't put your feet in the shoes of somebody with BPD. You don't, as much as you might know today, as much as you might understand, as much as an ex understands, as much as a relative understands or person in any relationship type understands, you still can't put your feet in their shoes because you really don't know. So as much as you do know, there's something you really still don't know. And that's because it's not logical or reasonable. And why would you know that? And that's what people keep trying to seek for closure is this thing that you can't really know because it's not reasonable and it's not rational. And it leads to so much ruminating about why did this happen? Why did that? Why did they say this? Why did they do? Why did I? Why didn't I do? Why I should have thought better about that? And it's just so much pain. 
cognitive dissonance, etc. Person with BPD basically, on a pretty consistent basis, is trying to put their shoes in your feet because they don't have any self-reference to have reference for how you feel and who you really are to put their feet in your shoes. So this is really important. And I just, you know, it's interesting because actually, I won't say where, but somebody said this to me actually meaning the opposite. And I was like, hey, you can't put your shoes in their feet. So that's not the entire explanation of this difficulty in these relationships, but it is something that maybe you can think of because it's kind of quirky. And I thought it was really funny when I heard it. Um, that, you know, you can't put your shoes in their feet speaks to the tragic futility of all that you're trying to help them with, get them to see, help them to understand. Trying to get them to go to therapy, which is not going to save your relationship anyways, because it takes years for them if they choose to go. So you can't put your shoes in somebody with BPD's feet. And the person with borderline personality disorder is living in such a way as they're trying to put their shoes in your feet because they don't have any reference for you, really, to put their feet in your shoes. Logic and reasoning leads to ruminating, confusion, bargaining, continued cycles of jade, you know, justify, argue, defend, explain, which is what ends up happening to the non-borderline who tries to talk and redress something with the borderline because they're not able to go there in an emotional when their emotions are running high and all they hear is you you you, all they perceive is you quote attacking them unquote even though it's probably the last thing you're doing or most people more often than not are trying to be calm and especially men i mean i think women have logic and reasoning skills too but men have this way that they're raised you know and i'm not going to go into all that but It ends up, and I have a lot of male clients and have had for for 30 years, so they're always saying, but like, it doesn't make any rational sense. I don't understand. I, I mean, I'm trying to reason with her. I'm being logical. Why doesn't this work? People with BPD coming from a place of magical thinking. So that really means that what they feel is what they perceive to be real. What they feel is all that matters. And they don't have the reasoning and logic skills. They might in an intellectual way for a career or job they do uh, if they have a high functioning BPD, but not emotionally, not in the emotional arena of relating. They have too much impulsivity to get overridden by emotions and that floods the brain. They don't really have those skills to be logical or rational. And until unless really well treated and or practically recovered or beyond and recovered and healed, they're not going to be able to override or in any way break through the repetition compulsions of impulsive defense. Impulsive defense that becomes an offense. So it starts off with them trying to protect themselves, ends up with them basically trying to annihilate you. And so that's the reason why you can't, maintain the relationship with somebody, especially untreated with BPD. And in doing so, you are sacrificing yourself and abandoning yourself. So again, what about you? You can't rescue them. You can't save them. You can't fix them. Your logic and your reasoning is the codependent kryptonite when you're trying to effectively use those skills with a person with BPD who was coming from planet emotions out of control and impulsivity and right fighting. They can't take in what you're saying and they don't. They just defend, defend, defend against it. So you can't put your shoes on the borderline's feet. Person with BPD can't put their shoes in your feet. 
more to the point, you can't put your feet in their shoes and vice versa. And that makes for two different emotional relational planets from which people are trying to connect. It's not really ever the connection that you imagine that it could be, would be, should be, was. Logic and reasoning are anathema to the borderline's magical thinking of what they feel is what's real for them. So I hope that was helpful because even after a long time, and there's a lot of people out there all over the internet, exes of somebody with BPD, even if briefly, and, and you know, then they put forward that they know so much about it. Well, anybody can Google some stuff and you can learn a lot, true, but you're never really gonna know, know that spot of where they really lack the emotional intelligence, the logic and the reasoning skills. And that's something only people that have been there know or the people that are there right now with BP that aren't aware of it don't even know. So there's no framework for them to be able to hear you. And especially not in conflict or when there's high emotions on their part, but also even in the in-between times. There's a lot of clients tell me, but then he or she said, and it was awareness. And it was, some people say, hey, they got lucid. And all of a sudden they were, they're not delusional all the time though or anything. I'm not saying that. But then it, it's fleeting and it's inconsistent and incongruent unless they act upon that awareness, can hold that awareness and take it to therapy and start to work in a healing and recovery process. You can't put your shoes in their feet and they can't put their feet in your shoes and you also can't put your feet in their shoes. So it's like trying to bridge a futile tragically impossible because you're not even in the same universe the impossibility of relationships with people with bpd neither side can put their shoes on the other person's feet and vice versa